moisturizing my hands. Good morning. I'm just moisturizing my hands. Mm -hmm. Happy Monday. It's the start of a brand new week. Different goal set up. I hope everybody had a really good weekend. Okay. Oh. completely would have um <laughs> oh that is so sweet i completely um thought this wallet pattern was gonna come out later this week and i found out this morning when i woke up it's coming out today because <sighs> normally what i do is i can um do more prepping but this wallet and i put all the information to the pattern and the pattern um I know the weekend goes way back too fast. Pattern uh, tutorial that I have and where you can purchase the pattern. And it has a nice slip pocket in the front, all raw edges. You have your ID window, your credit, another credit card, one slip in here, one slip in here, and three cards. And you have enough to put cash or like any of your information. I... I mentioned in the video, you can sew this down, and I did in this wallet. This one's all leather. And as you can see, I sewed it down. And it's the same thing, cards. This one I cut out um, a window so I can just slide the card in and out. That wallet is from Alita Designs and Isopea. Isopea means wallet in South African. So you, I, in the description box, I have where you can purchase your pa these patterns. And I just uploaded the video like a, less than 30 minutes to an hour ago. It's a fast make. It takes more to cut these out than to actually make it. And I give you two examples. Like this one is edge coat. So it looks more cohesive as one piece. Here I show you how to fray the edges with a lighter and how to use a fabric marker. You can get fabric markers pretty much everywhere, like Sally Tomatoes, Springfield Designs, Tandy Leathers. Uh, any place that sells t-shirts, they have like permanent markers. So I used a fabric marker and it's not as bright as, um, or vivid or thick as the, as a, the um, edge coat, but if you don't want to edge coat, I show you how to do this, putting double-sided tape real close to each other, kind of rolling it out and trying to make it one seam, stitch it, and then you can use a fabric marker. So I try to give that as a, you know, a little disclaimer. I'm trying to figure out what is so foggy behind me. <laughs> okay. Um, so today I have... Today's mostly, this week is mostly strikes and strikes is what we went over yesterday. When a fabric company gives you fabric to make bags, I have a couple bags I need to make and I'm making one of them out of my, my try and true. Um, I'm going to make an Erica Bowler bag and the other one I'm making a carpet bag so it could look like Mary Poppins. And I haven't figured out what I'm going to make for the fourth one. I'm either thinking the Speedwell or uh, the convertible, um, crossbody. I need to figure that out. Um, I have one tester. I no, one bag I need to film. I need to film the bag of the month for February. And I need to film the, op like the first part of the Patreons for the, um, Lojima for the exterior and how we're going to do the pocket in the back and turn it into a backpack. That is actually quite fast because I have made the Ojima like I probably, I'm not even like not trying to like toot my own horn. I probably can make four to five in a 12 hour setting. It, 
is once you do one, you kind of understand. And if you're familiar with Joe's patterns and you kind of understand her love language or sewing and it works out fine. Um, I did download her wallet clutch, the limousa limos. I always have to Google her names of the words because I cannot say anything. Okay, there's a couple of car, um, car, uh, carpet bags. And a lot, one is from Samantha, Mrs. H, and she has one of the best carpet bags. And Janelle from Emmeline Bags carries the frame. Then there is a person, um, Sarah, no, it's, is it Sarah Lamb? Um, it's something Lamb, and she's in the UK. And it, the, the carpet bag's actually a tutorial on Craftsy. And it's like four or five years old, and they still have it on there. So if you look up Lisa Lamb, if you look up Lisa Lamb, you'll see her carpenter bag on there. And the third one I love, and I never remember the name because the pattern does not have a PDF. It is actually only a paper pattern and it is massive. The frame I think is 18 inches and that's the one I'm making. So here's the thing. Um, I'm trying to go live for Patreon sometime this week. So Patreon, um, you guys, when I, I'm trying to either stream on Wednesday or Thursday because there's no all kids are at school and there's after school activity so that way we can just stream and if I only person that interrupts me is my puppy then you guys are okay um I might I might be streaming me making the carpenter bag because I haven't asked the person if I can do a tutorial for it yet because the only reason why I haven't did a tutorial there's only one person I know that carries the actual hardware for the bag and that's in line bag so if you're in Canada it's like cool you can get that Canada post if you're anywhere in the world, you have to pay a lot more for shipping. And that's the reason why I haven't made that bag. I can make the Mrs. H bag. Um, I've made it. If you're in her group, hit Shinova. I have made that bag so many times. And it's a fantastic seller. Um, and the Lisa Lamb one, I like because it uses like wires for like wires that you're able to bend yourself as open and close or it doesn't have that method but it just looks it looks really posh and really nice and you also could take emmeline bags the retreat bag if you put handles on that it kind of gives it like a little bit of a carpenter bag look and there's a also there is the chickadee from um i'm trying i'm trying to help you guys out with the modification so you can see how my brain works the chickadee from so sweetness is actually a backpack However, if you remove the backpack and you remove the front pocket and you can make it smaller or like taller or smaller, it opens up like the Mary Poppins bag. So you can make that actually into a carpenter bag if you really wanted to. Um, so th those are the ones that I know of. I know that there's probably more, but anytime you see like wire openings and hinges, this is where you can be like, huh, if I take this, this, and this way, it will look like a carpenter bag. So I'm going to be making the Mary Poppins one, I think, Wednesday. I think. So I'm, I'll am i put in the Patreon information um, in our group to tell you, ask you when you want me to stream live, either Wednesday or Thursday. And it'll be between 12 and I want to say 3 because my teenager comes in around that time. And she's the loudest one. Ma, what are you doing? You know I'm in my workroom. What are you making? Oh, I like that color. Can you make me one? <laughs> this is what I get. You'll hear it eventually on that thing. Um, so that's what I'm planning on doing. I plan on streaming live on YouTube either Thursday or Friday. I'm hoping Monica, Monica <laughs> is ready so that we can do a bag together. Um, so mostly this week it's all strikes, one test, one tester bag, and one video no actually two videos because i plan on filming um uh the mercury bag i plan on filming that so that's ready next week so you'll have that available for next week's as well so i'm excited this wallet i think you'll really like because this is it's not very big here's my phone it's not very big but it carries a lot and there's a coin pouch I cut this out just for you to see. There's a coin pouch option where it's actually going to be lined. And I it kind of folds in like this. And I thought this would be the cutest thing for people who collect coins. Because I don't, 
I don't judge. I have a lot of friends that when they find a coin on the ground, they look at the date, whatever, and they'll stick it in their pocket. I thought this would be really cool. I thought if you made this like in a Hello Kitty or Jurassic Park print, it could be a really great wallet. I think you use can use cam snaps or the riveted magnets, but you can't use just a magnet because the only thing that's protecting it from the back is one layer of cork or vinyl or whatever you're having. And the other button goes in the slide pocket. I mean, technically you could use it, but then every time you're putting a card in or whatever, you have a chance that you can slice your finger or uh, mess up the card by scratching the numbers or whatever. So um, I use a 24 line spring snap. I will be putting that a part of Nova's Notions. I am having a Nova's Notions video for not the string that just fell. Yeah, hole puncher, pink. And I was like, what? And it has a lot of cool features. So I should be filming that tomorrow. And the I'm filming today how to stabilize your... For, um, I have a skill builder for the Patreon. I just haven't, I just need my husband to help me out with the camera views because it's hard to explain when you're working with steam. So those are all the things. Um, if you're not a part of bag of the month club, I'll put the information in the description box and cause we're already going to be in February before you know it. And with that being said, so magical, I'm so nervous and so excited. <laughs> Um, I did apply for So Magical for for Florida. So cross my fingers, I could be a teacher there because I'm really excited about teaching what I have um, planned and everything's there. I really like this Well, I feel like this will do really well at craft shows too. So if you're a person that is doing, you have a business and you're going to like bazaars, craft shows, um, handcrafted things, also look at go to your local county and see what shows they have and you can also see if you can be an exhibitor or an artist that goes there and weird weirdly if you're in an area that has a lot of horses there are a lot and i when i say this a lot of event planes i know i think you're gonna love it hi dalva um i think you will absolutely love it cheryl because I don't want to spoil what I'm having, but the, the all I have to say is I have never seen anyone on YouTube, nor have I seen anybody offer this as a class. It it's going this the class I'm doing at in um Texas. I don't even think it we're lauded for one and a half hours. I honestly don't believe we're going to be more than fifty minutes because I did all the prep work. I'm going to prep all the um the exterior, the exterior with Shape Flex One Hundred One. I need to actually get some more sofas from Monica so I can do the rest of those. And then the foam interfacing is by Annie. We're cutting all those out. We're machine basting the exterior to the foam. So we're basically just putting, I'm putting on all the zipper pulls. So basically we're just sewing the zippers, you know, exterior lining, exterior lining and boxing the corners. If we're more than an hour, I would be surprised. But, you know, I want everyone to sew at their own pace because somebody could be done in 10 minutes and somebody might need the whole hour and a half. But that's where we're allotted because it's a pouch. Now, the one I'm trying to teach in in uh, Florida, I'm trying to ask for two to three hour class because it's a little bit more labor intensive. But it is something that I don't see out there. And when if I if I get approved, uh, you guys will be the first people that know what the class is. <laughs> um, I, I, I have a love and hate thing with cutting. I hate cutting, but at the same time, I kind of love it because I, I don't want somebody else messing up the pieces that I'm cutting. So, but uh, yes, I plan on cutting out I, my classes for 40 people. I'm making 50 kits. Um, right now there's 26 people in the class, but there are a few people in the class that have double kits and then any extra kits I have, I will either sell if somebody needs it on the spot and or if someone wants it um one of one of the subscribers wants it because they just want to see what um the oil skin cotton feels like i'm really excited about that because that was something i didn't see at a lot of um event places like showing different different kind of um textures of fabric like whether it's wax canvas oil skin or like i would love someone to use craft text because craft text itself can be turned into any part of a bag, but a lot of people don't use it because 
it feels like cardboard so you're you're a little bit reluctant but it's a pretty cool material and I'm pretty excited about it there are a lot i'm telling you between this week all the way through the 10th of february there are a slew full of patterns that are coming out and i'm excited and i'm filming a lot of them so you guys will have a lot of content in the month of february as well i'm really excited to do the mercury bag because i thought it was going to be so long and then the pieces come together relatively easy after you cut them out after you cut them out you have whatever your all your phone based it to what or what i'm promised you're going to be like this this is easy <laughs> so um, um all those are happening craft text um uh, no you want the craft text with the k the one with the c is actually from lazy girl sews and it's a stabilizer they have a fusible and a non-fusible and they're they crazy thing always check out uh, other designers and how they use stuff craft text for lazy girl designs they use it in totes they like not the bottom like the whole tote is in craft text now their craft craft text is a little bit thicker to me than the Pellon 71 and the glue one is even more i use the glue one a lot in a lot of bag bases but they use it at all over the whole entire bag and it's it's kind of pretty awesome because i did one of their bags with it and i was like holy moly i love the way this bag is they it's formulated where it can bounce a little bit without it crinkling now the craft test that looks like cardboard there are two versions there's the unwash and they're washed and this information i'm telling you right now i learned from maggie 55 generally when you're using it for interfacing you want the unwashed because it's the most stiffer and it's it it acts kind of like cardboard or like a decaville heavy in some cases if you're using it to make a bag you want the wash because it eliminates the shrinkage and everything craft text is a mixture of like paper um leather it's like a a hybrid and it can get wet and it can dry it's pretty cool but there's an unwashed version and a wash version and i did not know that until maggie 55 pointed it out and then i noticed it that like barnes and nobles and books a million sells craft text but it usually is the wash version it's a it's a process i like i will sit there and google all day about <laughs> about interfaces but tr tr go look at lazy girl sews and i unfortunately the owner and creator of it um passed away last year very young she was i don't even think she was 40. um but her her patterns are pretty brilliant and her she created her own interfacing similar to like by annie her formula for her foam is completely different than our foam um basel foam it's completely different and the, i'm always a big advocate for by annie's not because she only created it is that i make a lot of bags and the bounce back is incredible and i love the fact the more that you sew in an area in her air er, er, her area the more it flattens um so just yeah there's a lot of foam there's another foam i have a piece of paper over there it's called legacy legacy may beat out um by any for me but it's so much more money so much more money but legacy is one of my is like my splurge like if i want something truly unique in this bag i will go for legacy actually what i use legacy on my backpack the one with the v the supernatural like people were like oh my god the quilting is so amazing that was legacy in the back i can't explain it's a, it's formulated a little bit differently the more you go into the rabbit hole of interfacing the more you figure out how things are formulated the wider it the broader you can get like it's pretty cool like i think i threw people off at so magical like florida because uh monica was talking about her so fuse and so fuse plus and i told people that i like so fuse plus because i like to use it in my lining and everybody was looking at me like what are you talking about okay <laughs> there are certain bags that are have an open a wide mouth and you can see directly into the bag a good example of this is the Harith by um, Lavender and Twine. I use Craft Text. Uh, I mean, I use her Soap Infuse Plus on it because I'm able to crease out the line before I birth the bag. So after I birth it and I close up the line inside, 
it is nice and crisp. Like you could like throw a quarter, you could bounce off of it. There's no slouchiness inside because for some of the Sofuse works plus works better for me in there. I also use it for my slip pockets because it gives it a little bit more body and it doesn't bow all the way in and it doesn't bow out. I, me and Teresa were talking about bags that have a pocket that's wider than six inches. They have a tendency of bowing out if there's not dividing like, you know, pencil or lipstick or whatever dividers are created into two. Well, one of the things I've noticed is if I use Sophie's Plus or a heavier interfacing, it stays taut against the body versus then bowing out or bowing in. Also trim. I notice if I have trim, it doesn't bow in as well as, as much either. Because I like bigger slip pockets because my phone is not going to fit in a three inch. Yeah, it can sit like this, but chances are I want it like, because I grab it from like this. It just depends on how you grab your own phone. Um, but yeah, that's me rambling about interfacing. I think I can have like a lot of difference. I have so much knowledge on interfacing and who has what and how they formulate it. But yeah, I, <laughs> I'm telling you, by Annie, I'm just saying, and Legacy. Man, I love that. It's just so expensive. And you know who else has really good foam? Um, boating stores and car plus um, car places um, that do upholstery for cars. That's like an untapped resource people don't use because they usually have remnants that are less than a yard and they can't use. And they will sell it to you for extremely cheap because they want to get it out of their area because they can't use it for the car or anything. Yeah, interfacing could be super confusing. Um, I was confused and that's why I started just researching more because when I when um, I was trying the Maggie 55 zip around wallet many moons ago, she kept saying craft text and I was like, oh, the one by by um, Lazy Girl Sews. Nope. One's with the C, one's with the K. And one is purely just an interfacing and the other one can be used as an interfacing and or be sewn with it's it's pretty cool because it doesn't fray and all that stuff. it's really really cool but the, there is a difference between the unwashed and washed one and i honestly believe the ones that are dyed with color are thinner than the ones that are just brown just brown or darker colors i have no idea why but the it it works like that so that's what my plans are today good morning teresa yeah, we, well, the thing is, is that I believe all fabrics can be interfaced. I'm one of those weird people that I have interfaced. I have, you. well, I like to use, um, you know, uh, waterproof canvas or water resistant canvas as exteriors sometimes as like accent pieces. And I interface them all the time. Or I'll have someone, someone was asking me the difference, difference between Thermalam and Fleece. Fleece has a lower pile and Thermalam has a higher pile pile so therefore it kind of gives your bag a better fill and a little bit more structured um and i love thermalam and if all the og bag makers <laughs> before they started using by any foam if you look at their original pattern that's what they call for because it's pretty thick it is pretty thick and i love 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 thermalam and it's it's mid-weight like prices if you're able to get a roll on sale like go for it like most most totes most bag makers especially if it's a pattern that's older than 10 years old they ask for thermalam oh yeah kindle every time i open up a new a new um <laughs> a new double size tape and i smell it he's like something is wrong with you <laughs> i was like i can't help it <laughs> yes between glue and interfacing i feel like i know a lot about that i'm not the all be all all known but i think i have like kind of like an unbiased opinion because i'm not invested in any of these companies i'm just giving you what i feel like as a bag maker will be pretty cool I, and again like seriously when you get off look at craft text with a k and then walk look at unwash and wash and then look at craft tax craft text from lazy girl sews with the c and if you have a chance to go to your sewing shop which is real this is the funny part because Lazy Girl Sews is part of like, a not her, her now her business, because again, 
she passed away last year, unfortunately. Um, she was one of the people I wanted to meet. Like my other person I wanted to really meet was Nancy from Nancy Notions. Like, I don't know. She was, I, I also want to meet by Annie. Um, so I'm hoping she travels around somewhere because I want to meet her and Tula Pink. I wanted to meet Nancy. And when she passed away, I literally cried all day because she was like my sewing guru. She's one of the first people that, you know, before she starts sewing, she would put lotion on her hands. And it's, these are things that I do now. Like if you look really close at my work centers, there's some kind of lotion somewhere because she was the one that said that when we work with material, whether it's vinyl, mesh, cotton, it takes the moisture away from our hands, which can break your nails off, make them brittle. It can make your hands look cracked and give you premature, premature aging in your hands and cause calluses. So before I sew every single time, I put lotion on and it's because of Nancy Notion. And um, then I seen by Annie do it and I was like, well, you know what? These two are extraordinary sewists and they've been in the game longer than I've been alive. <laughs> so I'm following them. You got to meet, oh, lucky you. I really wanted to meet her. She was on like, I have like this sewing list that people that I desperately wanted to meet. Um, just like I want to go to that place somewhere in the U.S. where it's like a whole town worth of sewing. I think I will lose my ever-loving mind there. Like Kendall will be like, I'm not going with you. I'm dropping you off. I'll, I'll be back in eight days. <laughs> like, um, I, I want to go to that. There's like a whole sewing town and I love fabrics. I definitely want, I want to go visit. I buy a lot of fabrics from, um, stitch supply co and they have a storefront and i would love to go see that storefront and now um my handmade space has teaching classes in person i want to go there i invest a lot of zippers and a lot of different things in that store where i'll purchase and they're not that far from me they're on the east coast i mean they're a plane right away but it wouldn't be like a two hour it's like massachusetts and i'm in maryland so I want to go see their brick and mortar and their storefront. I, I, now I'm now that like they're like, there is still restrictions with COVID, but a little people are a little bit more okay with going and flying. I would like to see them big time. Um, they're, these are all just dreams and goals and aspirations. I'm hoping that one day I go to a quilt show and buy Annie and Tula Pink is there and I can just like fangirl out all day long all day long <laughs> and then like sally tomatoes and noodle head there and then i have like the best day ever um yeah so look up those if you look at craft text with the k and you'll see there's a wash and unwash and then look at craft text with the c that's lazy girl sews and when you go see what how she uses it in totes and bags it's gonna blow your mind um missouri star i don't know where it's it the company itself has like a small little town where it's like everything is like so and it's uh, i know the company's containing missouri town you should be able i <laughs> know i need to go to the okay everyone tells me i need to go to the quilt market i i'm afraid that i'll be like the loudest person there like freaking out about seeing everybody like um, cause I know Rashida Coleman goes there too. And she's one of my favorite, um, designers too. I buy like whenever she comes out with a print, I'm like, let's do it. I want to see Tim Holtz. Like there's a lot of people, cause I just, I'm curious to see the people behind the fabric that inspires me. So, and then I, I, there's just a lot. And, and then I want to have a Canada tour where I get to, <laughs> I get to go to Emmeline bag. I will go to MM Cork and all these different beautiful people that are in Canada that sell stuff. Oh, see, you guys are very, very lucky to meet her. Like I, that, that was like, <laughs> if you don't, <laughs> this is how much I'm dedicated. If you go to my Instagram page, the day she passed away, I have like a post, like, like you could tell who I really like. Cause if someone passes away, I have a post because like it affects me. It, these are the artists and people that like help me get through things. I was devastated. Like I really wanted to meet her. Um, yeah, that was a hard one for me. Um, so on my Instagram post, there is a picture of her and one of her quotes. And yeah, I wanted to meet her. Definitely. I have a lot of her books, a lot. And I have a lot of her like 
little pamphlets to teach you stuff. I have her surger book. I read it. I'm still a little bit afraid of my surger, but I did get by learning a lot from her books. Yes, I I know I haven't I haven't ordered from them yet. The catalog looks completely different than what I'm used to, but I usually like to get stuff there because they have a lot of notions that you don't see in um, craft stores or you don't see on Amazon, and you're like, yes, that I like going to look at buying online shops to see different things. Like another point, um, my two daughters, my two stone daughters, they're in Bear, California. And their family has this brick and mortar that's been open since 1940. And they have the most pr prettiest print and rayon and silks. And they always have the most unique scissors in the most unique notions. So, yeah. When I'm not sewing or playing around with my kids or talking to my husband, I'm on the internet looking at weird notions. That's what I do. I'm not going to lie. It's just it makes me happy <laughs> so that's it my friends I should be cutting out today mostly and then probably sewing up one at least one of the strikes and then I'll have to take pictures sometime this week I, I need to schedule out pictures it's probably gonna be Thursday but I hope you like the the wallet tutorial that's out and I hope everyone has a really good day okay Thank you for coming by. Stay safe. Happy sewing. Bye.